Okay, today we're in the office and we're going to uh, kind of evaluate these new Apple M1s in terms of are they ready for use as, especially with full stack development. Um, main, main issue that people have been having is Docker and Homebrew. Obviously need those two things to work generally to uh, do most software development. I won't go into a lot of the performance of this machine, just, just me using it, I can tell you for sure. Uh, most things, it's actually faster than any of my existing MacBooks. Uh, compile performance is really good. Um, this is uh, the only thing that makes it in right now is the 13 inch, and uh, I've not weaned myself to the smaller monitor. I'm, I'm used to like 15s or 16 inch uh, MacBooks, so that I'm not quite yet ready to switch. Uh, but I kind of wanted to do just a quick video on whether this uh, will actually work with a software development environment, uh, especially the one that I use, um, and that, that includes mobile development. Uh, in a previous video that I did, uh, you could see some of the tools that I use on my MacBook. Um, I'm going to test the majority of those on this Apple M1. Stay tuned. Okay, so basically I've swapped out uh, my MacBook Pro uh, Intel with the M1. Basically plugged it into this LG monitor. Uh, it has a uh, Thunderbolt style connection so that I've got power and everything coming to it. So I really haven't noticed a difference as far as that goes. Pretty much just plugs right, right into my standard setup. Um, prior to this I just tried to install the standard Docker. Uh, there's a tech preview out there for it. Um, but this is the message that you get. This is just a screenshot letting you know that it's incompatible. So the, the version of Docker last that I checked when I made this video um, does not support M1 hardware. However, there's a technology preview that you can download. Um, I, I got into it just after they announced it um, and uh, I've been using it since then. And, but I'm going to go through it here and install Docker just to show you what it looks like. Uh, so this is the preview 5. The Fan, I haven't, I, if it's been on, I haven't noticed it. So that's one thing. It's super quiet and, and it is noticeable. Um, and really don't pay a lot of attention to the speed here because OBS is running in the background. That's what I'm using to capture this. And it's, uh, it's going to drag down performance some. Uh, to be honest, on the other machine, on the MacBook, it, it, I think it's, it's noticeably faster uh, with OBS running, capturing the desktop at, at doing this. Okay, we're just going to try something standard, something I would use. Um, I'm guessing MySQL is going to work with no issue, so I'm going to choose to do Microsoft SQL, uh, which is a little more non-standard. It looks like it's pulling down the image. Okay, so there's the first issue. I don't know if uh, Microsoft actually has an image uh, for the... Let's just take a look here. Um, pull this over. Uh, it may be possible, but it doesn't look like uh, these are supposed to be full tag images. Obviously, all these are Intel, so that image will not run on this platform. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're doing, uh, you know, Dockerish things um, that they have to be able to basically be able to support the platform. Because uh, this looks pretty easy to do via Homebrew. Uh, to get set up. And I will say, um, again, a lot of these problems you could probably get over if you do a little research. It's not as easy as it is on the Intel platform right now. I expect that to get better, but at least Docker's running. Um, okay, we'll try um, RStudio here, see if it does automatically work. And it's downloading. Okay, so it does look like you actually have to give Docker a little more information. Um, it, it defaults to the uh, AMD 64 version, and obviously we're running an ARM. Uh, so on that note, um, if you are willing to, one, use a technology preview uh, for Docker, and what Docker packages you want to install actually have a ARM version, uh, you should be okay. Uh, the few that I've tried work. Uh, 
it's pretty much a showstopper for me if I can't get um, you know a lot of the databases, especially Microsoft. Right now, uh, I'm un unable to actually find a uh, ARM version of that, and that's pretty much a showstopper uh, because I use that pretty much regularly. Um, you know, bring up my uh, Microsoft SQL database temporarily in Docker for development. Uh, a couple other things I had issues with: um, RStudio had issues installing. Uh, or getting the Docker image up, some of the commands didn't work um, on the install. But there is uh, any, I would expect anything that is Raspberry Pi uh, that you use there that's going to have an ARM version uh, that you can use. Uh, so that may be a hint whether this will work for your development. Doesn't work for mine right now. And again, I'm probably I'm probably looking at a larger Mac, uh, a MacBook Pro that's you know 14, 15, 16 inches big. Hopefully by that time they'll have all this sorted out. Um, but let's move on to Homebrew and see how that pans out. I know that uh, I had played around with Homebrew uh, running it in Rosetta. Uh, I, I had not installed the current version of Homebrew. Uh, I know that they made a couple of changes uh, recently. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so what have we learned so far? The M1, uh, all the Apple apps work. All of the JetBrains tools work uh, under the M1. Um, which is a pleasant surprise. What does that mean for you as a developer? Should you go out and buy an M1? Well, if you're a full stack developer, probably not. Um, I would not recommend it. Uh, until Docker gets mainstream ARM support, uh, they finish actually releasing a version that works with it well. Uh, it does run. There are some uh, points of failure, especially with Microsoft SQL and Docker. And um, that's going to cause you issues probably as a full stack developer, especially you get Homebrew, you can run it all under Rosetta, but it adds another step that you got to execute and start Homebrew with, uh, which is kind of, it's painful. It's, waste, it's wasting time uh, in my view. Um, JetBrains, if you're, if you're basically a, you know, JetBrains, uh, use it as a code editor or using Sublime and you don't mind uh, pushing it out to a different system to actually test, it would probably work okay for you. If you're doing Xcode development, uh, just mobile development or Mac development, it'll probably work great for you right now. Um, but until these issues get polished out, um, you probably want to stick with Intel. Uh, for me, uh, I have uh, probably my main platform is a 2015 MacBook. Uh, that's generally what I do most of my development on. Um, I'll probably keep that until, you know, way later till we actually have something comparable to that MacBook Pro. Uh, this is uh, this is pretty speedy. It's faster than what that one is, but it's not, uh, the screen size just kills it. Uh, I, I need a bigger screen. Okay, I'm just going to go over this uh, really quick. Um, M1, I've had some exposure to it. It would work great for someone that is doing Xcode development. Um, if you're doing very light and don't expect uh, to actually have a lot of this like containerized on your machine, Docker does work, um, but it doesn't work great yet. Uh, main, the main issue is the uh, you know there's just not a lot of Docker images out there that you can even build that will build on the ARM platform yet. Uh, there's a lot of them that are missing, uh, most notably Microsoft SQL. So if you need, if you're doing MySQL develop or Microsoft SQL development, uh, you're likely to run into Windows. Uh, uh, or you're likely to run into issues with that, just because they, the default Docker Hub uh, is is AMD 64, uh, not ARM. Uh, so there's no package available, and that, that's going to be the case on several of the things. Many of the things, if you if you're doing a lot of uh, you've messed with any of the ARM, other ARM Linuxes, uh, especially like Raspberry Pi, MySQL stuff like that, I don't think you're going to have an issue with. Okay, so we know we can't run Homebrew as is. We have to do something else uh, to get it to run. So let's try. Here's where we're at now, unsupported, and we're going to try to run this under Rosetta. Okay, this is first run, so it's got to install command line tools. Um, which is going to take a while, I'll speed this up. Okay, it's now installing brew, and we'll see what, uh, we'll try something simple like Midnight Commander. 
So obviously during all this, um, I've been running OBS pretty much entirely in the background. Uh, OBS works great uh, with the M1. Uh, as well as uh, I had really good luck. IntelliJ seems to work fine. Sublime seems to work fine. Okay, so we've got uh, Homebrew installed and we're going to execute one command just to create an alias. Uh, and that's going to be basically sending everything. If we do brew, it's going to add the arc uh, command to make Rosetta work. And we're going to run that. And we'll just, we'll just try Midnight Commander. I would, I would expect on brew as they add support for the M1 and the ARM architecture um, that you may, may run into more of uh, you actually are building it locally in your system rather than it being poured. Uh, but this looks like it's installing uh, pores for uh, Intel architecture. So that'll probably be, I'm assuming that'll be something that, that'll change maybe a little bit in Umbra. It'll actually show you what architecture it's installing. Um, so let's try it out. Let's see if it works. Hey, man, that looks good. So it looks like with just a minimal amount of change, uh, Homebrew works just fine. So that is good news. Um, that's kind of one less thing you have to worry about. The Docker uh, is still going to be an issue. It's not quite ready for prime time yet, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I know a lot of developers, they don't are not necessarily using containers yet. They're actually installing things locally on the machine. I would expect that's going to work just fine if you do Homebrew and install MySQL locally and run it. Uh, not as a container, uh, that may work for you. Okay, hopefully this helps your decision making progress out on right now, uh, today. It's the middle of December, Apple M1. Probably not ready for prime time as far as a developer's machine, uh, but it will be soon. It's, it's on its way, it has all of the components that you would want to have, and it's really fast and uh, really smooth uh, operation, especially with the editors. The limiting factor right now is the back-end stuff, Docker, uh, homebrew, I would say, uh, you know, it's, it's it's five extra minutes setting it up, um, so that really, you know, is not a showstopper for me. It wouldn't be a big deal. Obviously, it would be better if everything was running, you know, on the native platform, but uh, that's coming from what I can see, and it shouldn't be much longer. Anyway, be sure to drop me a comment, so let me know, especially if you have experience with this, or maybe you see something that, uh, especially on the Docker stuff, if... Uh, you see a better way of starting those in different architectures or things like you know where a version of Microsoft SQL is that runs on ARM, I would like to hear about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.